Hello, plant friends. Hope you guys are all doing well out there in real life land. I am so, so excited to bring you guys today's episode. We are joined by Lynn, who is a plant hobbyist living in Nevada. For those of you guys outside the US, Nevada is a very dry place. Very, very, very dry. And yet she is keeping her plants happy and healthy. Um, I'm super excited about this one because I know Lynn spent a lot of time, a lot of takes, uh, you know, giving us this content. So definitely, guys, definitely follow her on Instagram and give her your support. Um, also, she is going to be talking about plants we rarely ever talk about on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. Hello, my name is Lynn. I am a plant enthusiast from Reno, Nevada. I'm here today to talk about some underrated plants of Instagram, ones that I've documented on my plant journey. I wanna tell you how I take care of them and what I've done to keep these plants alive in my home where I live in a high desert. It is very dry. We have very little humidity. My house is currently reading at 35% humidity with no humidifiers running at the moment. That's low, it's hard, but, but we manage, we manage. Before we get started, just wanna tell you, the underrated ones for me are begonias. I know how people feel out there about begonias. Begonias, begonias. I know, I know what you're thinking right now. I hate begonias, right? Right, is that what you're thinking? Wait till you see these begonias and then you tell me you still hate begonias, okay? All right. Let's take a look at the first one. So here we have the Begonia Maculata Whiteii. This one has that gorgeous burgundy underside, which definitely attracts me to it all the time. This one here is native to, I believe, was it the uh, rainforests of Brazil, I think is where this one is from. And it has these beautiful, silvery, bright, dots all over it. It gets these really nice long leaves with these thick bamboo-like fleshy stalks that hold it up. These plants can tend to get really top heavy so you have to be careful um, what you plant them in. Um, normal, they're gonna grow. They grow like three to five feet tall some of them, some even taller so they're gonna topple right over and you're gonna be ending up with a broken plant. So a lot of these you want to make sure you put in some sort of cachet pot or a heavier pot because you're going to be using a lighter airier soil mix. I usually mix about 50% perlite into some normal like miracle Grow soil and then I'll also add some thin orchid bark and some earthworm castings or whatnot to break up the soil, give it some nutrients, all that good stuff. But that's definitely something to watch out for. Um, some of these I do need to start stocking. I haven't done it yet, but I highly suggest it. You should stick something in there and attach it to it so that it will hold it up and the plant can grow upright. You'll see with some of my other begonias, they're just <clears throat> right now because I didn't stake it up. My bad. So some of these I have in clear pots. I like to see what's going on with my roots. I want to know like if they're getting roots or if they're rotting. I mean, one of these stalks did end up rotting in here at one point. This one did come with me to, from Massachusetts to over here. So she had a little rotten piece right there, but this leaf has been here since, I don't even know, April. I only had one leaf forever. I almost gave up on her. Look at how beautiful she is now. And they come out of like this little coil when you get a new one. See, it's hard to see, it's like shaky, but it's kind of neat the way they come out. Take a look at that Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye. Next up, we have Begonia. I believe this is good and plenty, but I'm not positive. Uh, this plant is newer to my home and it's another cane begonia with those awesome burgundy undersides. This one's kind of neat though because the dots on it, the little spots dots, are kind of more of a fuchsia. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but they're like a pinky, like iridescence. 
another nice cane. This one definitely is going to need to be stocked. As you can see, it's starting to tip over there. And this one has lots of new ones coming in with those nice little crinklies. Got those nice ripply edges. The soil is quite light and airy. There's a lot of moss in there. Again, I live in the desert, so um, I forgot that is something I also add to my mix is some moss because I need it to hold on to a little more moisture than maybe most people do. It needs to be watered when you can stick your finger in and like the top half inch is dry because begonias need to be kept a little bit more moist, but not sopping wet. And most of the time, I'll use a moisture meter because I'm definitely an overwater, overpay attention a river. So stick one of these bad boys in right into the soil. Make sure it's set to water and not set to pH or light because I've done that before, watered everybody and realized it wasn't set to the right thing. So everybody got overwatered. So make sure it's set to moisture. And this one right now, she got watered today, so she's at a 10, she's moist. But if it falls down to probably about three or four, that's when I give her a nice thorough watering. And that one was begonia, good and funny. And that is my cat, Nemo. This one is my special begonia. And something I forgot to mention before is all of these flowers, all of these flowers, all of these plants flower. So they'll all have beautiful flowers on them. This one has flowered for me numerous times and it has these beautiful pinky blush flowers. This one does not have the burgundy undersides, but she does have those very fluorescent, bright, sparkly dots. This one again is going to need to be staked. She gets tall, three to five feet, I do believe. Um, these can easily be propagated as well by cutting at a node. These are the nodes here, these bumpies. Cut underneath a node. You can do it in water, in moss. I prefer to do all of my propagations in moss under a uh, grow light with a heat mat underneath. It just happens so much quicker, so much easier. But you can also pop it in some water and change the water every two to three days and that will also help you get roots nice and quickly. Begonias root up pretty fast when you propagate them. This one is one of my favorites. I've had her probably about a year. Um, begonias aren't that expensive. They're easy to get. Uh, I've gotten begonias on Facebook Marketplace. I've gotten them on Facebook purges through a lot of the plant groups. I've got them through eBay, uh, Mercari, Poshmark, local pickups. You can get them everywhere. So on to my favorite begonia. I believe it's Begonia Medora and she is a monster. This one is Begonia Medora, I think, I think. And this is an angel wing Begonia. And this one has very petite, tiny little leaves. She's probably about three feet. I'm not even holding her all the way up and she's good inside of this um, big basket I have her in because she's so freaking top heavy. If I didn't have her in something like this, she would topple right over. So she definitely needs to be staked up. This one also does not have the burgundy undersides, but it has those cute tiny polka dots. Sorry, it's so shaky. And um, something I didn't mention before is I do different things when it comes to watering these. Because of living in the desert, it can be very hard to keep up on watering. So I'll use like a plant nanny, which is what's in here, which is just a ceramic like spike that you can stick a wine bottle in or a water bottle in and water your plants that way. Or you can do it like I did with the My Special Begonia and it has a cotton wicking cord inside and then it goes in a cachet pot of types or a vase that you fill with water and nutrients and it sucks it up from the bottom and it does a great job. And as you can see, 
the roots are actually growing right through the bottom. Thank you, Jimmy, so much for having me on your channel and letting me talk about the plants that I feel to be underrated. You can follow these plants journey and many more plants journeys on my Instagram at Booga's Big Green Garden. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Bye-bye. Lynn, thank you so, so much for all the hard work and all the takes that you did uh, to bring us this content. Thank you for coming out and finally, you know, sharing begonias on this channel. I, I keep trying to find uh, hobbyists and collectors that collect other plants um, or plants that are not aroids. And I'm finally, uh, we're finally getting a few on this channel. So I'm so, so glad to have you on the channel. Guys, you know, definitely check her out on Instagram. Give her a follow. I mean, goodness, you know, she's the one who should be on camera and not me. So yeah, give her a follow. Give her thanks. Give her your support, guys. Um, and uh, till next time, happy planting.